Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Bad Drinks TV. I'm your host H and today we're going to be talking about the French 75 because well it's coming up to new year and well champagne obviously. Gotta love this stuff but f***ing hell does it cost money. Now French 75 yeah f*** me what a can of worms this one is. So almost everything I've ever been taught about the French 75, which we all know about, which comes in a, supposedly in a flute, well, not so much. Little bit of a fucking head going on here. Right, so a few little things you need to do first. Books. Right, as you know, I, I love books. I've got a bit of a thing about books. So we'll start with a uh, Robert Vermeer, How to Mix Drinks, 1922. Uh, 1920s, Harry's ABC of Cocktails. Of course, the Savoy, 1930s, Mr. Harry Craddock. And then we'll also know this motherfucker from the previous episodes. Uh, fine art to mix drinks. This one is gonna be a bit of a curveball and I'll explain later in the episode. All right, now we're gonna talk about equipment. All right, so what are you gonna need for this one? Well, you're obviously gonna be needing some Boston tins or shaker tins or a set of tins, okay? The eponymous jigger. I got a nice new gold one. I like shiny things. I got a bit of a thing for shiny things. Okay. This will be rather useful. Uh, a muddler. Now I have one of these. This is from the guys at Batesi. This is also my spare zombie tool. Uh, basically because if there's ever a zombie apocalypse, this motherfucker can do some serious damage. And if it's handy in your back pocket, great. Right. And it's heavy. Oh my God, is it heavy. A fine strainer, oh no, me and fine strainers. Hawthorne strainer or strainer, peeler. Now this is called either uh, a carving peeler or uh, a hair strain, hair peeler. Um, what you want is one with this little groove, okay? This is important and you will need this. A knife, bar spoon, pestle and mortar. And I have some sugar in here. Now, before we start everything, what you should do as well as at home, or if you have to, also just do a simple syrup, or in my case, a rich two to one raw sugarcane syrup, okay? First off, let's do a quick muddling. Look, grind down your sugar first, okay? With this, all right? Because sometimes you can't always get powdered sugar. Uh, try not to get that, um, the sort of icing sugar, it's not quite the same thing, okay? So just get normal granulated sugar, and then just start grinding it down because this is all gonna become very apparent soon enough, especially when it comes to the fucking history of the French 75. I mean, Jesus Christ. Okay, so notes on ingredients for the French 75. Old Tom Gin, this is a barrel aged one, uh, mainly because traveling over here, it would have been aged in barrels. Beef eater gin, apple jack or apple brandy, brandy and cognac, champers or champagne, and to really fuck everybody up, absinthe, what the fuck? Seriously, right, well, it's all gonna become apparent soon. And then we also need lemon. And for me, granulated sugar in a pestle and mortar, which I'm now turning into a powder, okay? Uh, most importantly of all, I need to open up the champers. All right, now a little tip on opening up champagne. All right, in case you don't know, yes, my hand is still trying to repair itself. If you wanna know why, please watch the previous episode. All right, so, uncap. Keep one hand over the top, twist at the bottom, okay? Ah, there we go. And it should have a nice, quiet, there we go, and that's it. Now, how you wanna do a French 75, it's up to you, because we're gonna do a little brief history of it. The whole idea of adding sugar, lemon, and sparkling to a, a gin to make a French 75 isn't really actually that uh, new. So, there's a guy called Charles Dickens. You may have heard of him. He did something called a Christmas Carol, as we also happen to be in the winter time. And if you don't know what the Christmas Carol, then you're more of a humbug than I am. And what he used to do when he was in Boston was he used to give to his guests a champagne cup, which is basically uh, citrus, sugar, sparkling, but he used to add Old Tom Gin. So there you go, that's in 1867. A gin or Old Tom Gin 
uh, sugar, lemon and sparkling. So let's do that quickly now. Really easy to do this. Just get that one. So what I'm going to do is in a nice little cup, you can do a teacup, you can do a mug, you can do whatever you wish. It's up to you. And this one, you don't have too much on the, on the measures. Just a little squeeze of a lemon. A little bar spoon of uh, your powdered sugar that you've done. Just a little, there we go. Put that in there, like so. Okay. I'm not even gonna measure. This one, you don't, don't worry about measuring too much. Not on this one, have a bit of fun. Put a nice measure of Old Tom Gin in there. Add some sparkling. If you're gonna put this in a coffee mug, or a mug, please be careful, because, uh, well, yeah, you'll get pretty f***ing drunk quite fast if you do that, all right? And there we go, okay? And here it is. This is a facsimile of what it was in 1867. Mm. Oh, that's rather nice. Very easy to go down. My God, you can get f***ing wasted on this. Oh, lovely, all right. Okay, so. Here we are, 1867. Now in for a bit of a shocker. 50 years old later, and we're in World War One. And in 1915, uh, in the Washington Herald, there is a mention of a drink. It's called the Soissons Cows. And in this drink, allegedly, it's made up of, wait for it, gin, Calvados or apple brandy. And there's the shocker. I'm gonna put this as a surprise. Grenadine, yeah, grenadine and lemon juice. And this is now reaffirmed again in 1922 with Robert Vermeer, he also puts the same kind of ingredients in his recipe. But then if you want another little catch 22 that's coming along, Mr. Harry McElhone in his ABC, he drops the grenadine, uh, the lemon juice completely and adds absinthe. So there you go, no, no gin, we're talking apple brandies, lemon juice and absinthe and grenadine. And that's what people know of as the French 75 back then. And according to a uh, war correspondent, and this is one that's sort of, uh, well, it's a bit of a myth. Because the drink is named after one of the most famous cannons of all time, the French 75. According to him, uh, after having one, you're, you know, you're literally, your head was blown off. Well, yeah, because the myth is that if you ever see a 75 millimeter cannon shell, right, it's about that big, it's fucking huge, and they were mixing the drink in that. Of course, if you have fucking one of those, it's gonna fuck you up. I mean, Jesus Christ, they're fucking huge. You'd be putting whole bottles in there, topping it up with whatever's available. Oh my God, you're gonna be fucked up. So it's a little bit of a myth, really. So we're going from this drink in the 1860s, and now we're going to the next drink, which we're going to make very quickly now. 